is my salvation. Say, Jesus is my salvation. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my truth. Yeah. Jesus is my truth. Jesus is my peace. Your peace, our peace. Jesus hey. is my peace. I believe, I believe, I believe the word of God. Receive revelation. Receive revelation. Receive understanding. I receive all the things. I fully trust the word. I fully trust the word. I believe, I believe, I believe the word of God. Receive revelation. I receive revelation. I receive all the things. I fully trust the word. I will never, 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 never. I will never, never, never be the same. I will never, never, never be the same. I will never, never, never be the same. With the Holy Ghost power, I never, 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 I will never, no, never, never, never be the same. I will never, no, never, never, never be the same. I will never, 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 never be the same. With the Holy Ghost power, I take on the shield. I take on the shield of faith. I take on the sword of the Spirit. I take on the sword of the Spirit. I live by the word of God. 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 I would never, never, never be the same. I would never, never, never be the same. I would never, never, never be the same. With the Holy Ghost, I would never, 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 I would never, 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 never be the same. I would never, no, never, 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 never be the same. With the Holy Ghost, everybody give the Lord a shout. It is my pleasure to invite on stage our own Papa, Reverend. season to win. Take your healing. Take your freedom. Take your favor. Ay, 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 ay. Give the Lord a shot. supplication and thanksgiving in the spirit but you beloved building up yourselves in your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost Building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the spirit. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Zanke prakatosha teke prakatanda kadanda kadanda bananga doshka Brengato se teke prakato se teke ke madoka sa tele kabroka tajata Zambrakete yataka tayataha Anamanka tashe tele kabrayataha 
Zambre kata sota bade kato shata legamba dayata ha. Zambre kabreke to shete kebreke tajata ha. Praying with all supplication and perseverance for all sins. Eke panda kato le brake tajata. Zambre kato seta mananga tajata ha. Brake tata kembra kato shata tajata ha. Zambre kato shete legamba daga tajata ha yata. Zambre kato shoto kebra kato yata ha. Zambre kato yata tajata ha. Zambre kabra kato shete le braya tajaya kabra yata ha. That we might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Amanda kabra kote jate kabra yata. Amanda kato nde badenga tajata. Filled with the spirit of wisdom. Zambre kabra kato shete ya badoska. Elamanga tajata. Zambre kabra kato shoto yata. La kabra kato yata hayata. Talking about the wisdom of the spirit. Zambre kabato shota prayeta hayata. Amanda katonda bayata. Raprenda katoshka. Zimbre kabato shata yata. Zambre kabrakato shata yata. Zambre kabrakata yata. We declare this morning that we stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Hamako shetele maria yata. Ripranga to shataya. We stand perfect. We stand complete in all the will of God. Makapato shete ya bada yata. Elemanda kato yata. Zambre kapra kato shata yata. Ribra kata yata. Be filled with the fruit of righteousness. Ebando le prakoto shata manan kata yata. Zambra kapra kata yata. Zambra kata yata. Ekapanda kato shata yata. And so we stand this morning and we declare that we all with open face beholding us in a glass the glory of the Lord we are changed we live in the reality of the scriptures in the reality of the world which we have enjoyed, in the reality of the things that Jesus has accomplished for us, in the reality of the sacrifice of Jesus, Amato le braka prayata hayata, ebata kaprageta yapayata, ekapraka taboyata. The reality of the new creation, makke braka toyata, ekapaka pado shokopole yata, embraka tayata, emanda kapayata. Conscious of what Jesus has made available to us. Alamanka Tayata, that we have all of him. We have his name. E kapo le praketa yata. Amakando le prakata yata. We are filled with all the fullness of God. Le prakando shate yata. E prakato shoto yata. E saka prakata yata. E kaprakato shoto yata. E mandakata yata. E kapando shoto yata. E kapando Thanking God this morning for the blessing of a good pastor. Thanking God for our pastor, Dr. Abel Tamina. Thanking God for our mama. Thanking God for his family. Thanking God for what God has used them to do in our lives and in all the nations of the earth. Thanking God for the grace of God upon his life. We thank God this morning that utterance is given unto our pastor to make known the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank God for giving him boldness. Boldness to preach the word. Boldness to teach the word. Zakaprako to shota yata. 
boldness uh, to make Jesus known. Uh, and make the word of God manifest uh, as he ought to speak. Thanking God that through him and by him the preaching is fully known and that all the nations of the earth might hear. Amakole prakatayata zaka prakatoyata la makatoyata as he preaches e kaposha teyata. The word is having free cause. The word is glorified among us and in all the nations of the earth. Abakatos atayata in all the campuses, in all the house churches, Amadoka Prakatayata, Ekaprakatayata, through the social media platforms, a patole prakataya, radio and television, a pakatoyata, and prakatayata. Abakata, more and more people are coming to the knowledge of the truth. The light of God's word is shining. Abrakoto shatayata, breaking darkness, tearing darkness. Bakoto shatayata, zabraka prakatayata, eka prakatayata, cutting through biases. Embrako shatayata, and the truth of the gospel is exalted. Emato le prakataya, amakataya, eba. Emakataya, 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 God is confirming the word. God is confirming the word. With signs, with miracles. God is walking with him. Confirming the word with signs. As he preaches the word, the sick are healed, the bound are loose. Men who were in darkness are seeing great light and panka prakata for the light shined in darkness and darkness comprehended it not. Ematoko prokoto, a protocoto, a prokotoko, 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 a a prokotoko, 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 a breaking the barriers of the tradition of men and pakotosho toyata la batasha e kaprakatosho toyata e kaprakatoyata e kaprakatayata for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds we declare in the name of Jesus as the word comes as our papa is preaching the word akaposa tayata strongholds are pulled down amakaprakatayata mindsets that are contrary to the word amatole prakataya they are corrected amatakaprayata shiftings are happening akaposa tayata amakatapayata akaprakatoya ebrotoyata 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 Toyota, a protoyota, a protoyota, a protoyota. Men are turning from darkness to light. 
and from the power of Satan unto God. Abaka brako toyoto, embroko 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 toyoto, embroko. And broke a toyota, 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 a patosha toyota. Zabrakatoyata. We declare that our Papa is healthy. Akapo Shatayata is strong, is sound. Apato Prayata. And through him, the sound of the gospel will be heard in all the nations of the earth. Through him, the sound of the gospel will be heard in all the continents, cutting across all the earth is west not south makabraka toyata yata ekabraka toyata zakabrayata zakabaya 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 Father, we give you praise. Raise those hands and let's give him thanks. Zambrakatoyatahas. Zinlamando Koshi Tayata. Father, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Zimbrakosha Tayata. Emandosha Tayata. Thank you for revelation knowledge this morning. And we thank you for the free flow of your word. Abatole Prayata. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus, let the believers shout a bigger amen. amen. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory. Amen. Our papa in the house, our mama in the house, let's celebrate their presence with a good clap and a good shout. Somebody shout glory. Morning, papa. Morning, mama. We love you. We celebrate you. We honor you and we will always do. Hallelujah. But in the meantime, we want to hear from you what the Spirit is saying for now. Can you lift your two hands above your head? Clap those hands and joyfully let's receive our Papa, Dr. Abel Damina. Glory. Lift your right hands to heaven. Father, we thank you this morning for this another opportunity to come before your holy precious written word thank you that the mighty holy spirit lives on our inside so revelation knowledge is gifted everybody under the sound of my voice i decree that whatever is not planted by god is rooted out bodies and yokes are destroyed we rebuke sickness we rebuke disease we declare right now every discomfort ceases in the name of jesus god's healing power flows through the word this morning and every condition corrected where a miracle is needed, receive that miracle now in the name of Jesus. Father, we honor and bless and praise you and we thank you that the army is rising all over the nations of the earth. As the word keeps going forth, your people are being equipped to manifest the glory of Jesus and to spread the savor of his grace in every place. We give you praise for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name and every believer says a powerful amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our feet together. As we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same never ever be the same again in jesus name and every believer says a powerful amen are we excited to fellowship physically with one another this morning can we celebrate our fellowship together with a shout glory whoa i like you to walk around shake somebody greet somebody this morning make sure somebody is smiling Oh yeah, make sure somebody is smiling, make sure somebody is happy this morning. Those of you online, you can also shake yourselves and greet somebody. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. Always a joy and an honor to share fellowship in the light of God's word. Glory. Hallelujah. Are we excited to see one another and to be with one another this morning? Now can we celebrate our fellowship again with a shout? Glory. Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet smart self this morning. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. All of you on social media, you know, community connected way, by way of, of YouTube. We're so glad to have all of you. It's been a wonderful time of having all of you fellowship together with us in the light of God's word. And we thank God for the opportunity we have through social media to get the word of God to where you are on the bloomable planet isn't that a joy and a blessing and you can be in our services real time I mean that's something we need to thank God for that we have a platform where we can reach you with the gospel you know on Sunday morning even if you're in a place where there is no church you know that you can just be in power city and enjoy some good word isn't that something to thank God for we're really glad to have all of you and we'd like you to help us share the links tag some people there are people waiting for this kind of truth Make sure you share the links, reach out to people, ask them to connect to the service. We're going to have a great time as we study Christ Jesus this morning. We also want to welcome the radio audience in Akwa Ibom, wherever you're connected by way of radio. We're glad to have you in this service. Call a friend, call a family member. Ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. All our campuses around the world, all our clusters, house churches all over the Bloomable planet connected to the service. We want to welcome all of you to the service, guys. Get ready. We're going to have a great time of studying the word this morning. Let me quickly announce there are new campuses launching today. There's a campus launching and when I mention the places, you know, uh, they will put up the details on the screen. And those of you living in that part of the world, try and identify with the brethren there so together you can be a part of a lighthouse. All of you can lighten the dark places of your community, evangelize together, raise disciples together and build strong local assemblies for the manifestation of God's glory in these last days. All right, so this Power City International, FUT Mina, Gidang Kwanu, Gidang Kwanu, GK Campus. All right, that campus launches today. Can we celebrate them with a, a shout? I know your hands are busy, so you can just go, yeah. All right, there's another Power City launching today, Power City International, Shang, Shango Campus. That's in Mina State, Shango Campus. All right, this is in Minas, in Mina, Niger State. Did I say Mina State? And Dr. Gabriel, you didn't correct me. <laughs> is there a Mina State? <laughs> it's Mina in Niger State. Uh, that's, that's somewhere close to Abuja. Another campus is launching today is the Power City International Lapai Campus. Lapai Campus. This is also in Niger State. Niger State is today is for Niger State. Amen. So if you live in that part of Lapai, the details are on the screen. The phone numbers are all on the screen. You know, there's a lighthouse close to where you are. And more lighthouses are launching all over the nations. We will not stop until there is a lighthouse in every compound. There's a lighthouse in every street. There's a lighthouse in every community. There's a lighthouse in every city. There's a lighthouse in every state. There's a lighthouse in every country. And there's a lighthouse in every continent of the world. If you're with me on it, can I have a powerful amen? amen. And you know, as a, as a ministry, our core values, you know, our vision is to reintroduce Jesus to this generation. Equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. And you know, our focus is evangelism, effective discipleship, and building strong local assemblies. And one of the things that we give ourselves to as a ministry is prayer and the ministry of the world of the word and that's why we take time to pray sometimes when we're starting services like this we spend time to pray it's not a device to while away time it's part of the service that prayer is part of the service we give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the world so if you're a part of this church just make up your mind to love prayer because if you're allergic to prayer you cannot survive our church and if you're allergic to the teaching of god's word you can survive because those are the two things that you will always encounter here at Power City. Can I have a powerful amen? 
All right, we've been examining the name of Jesus. And today we're looking at part seven of the teaching. So if you only came last Sunday, it means you missed part two, part, I mean part three, part four, part five, part six. And now it's part seven. So if you hear some things that sound like, um, like uh, Latin, you need to go back and find out where it was well explained in the course of the week. In John chapter 14, Jesus was talking about using the name of Jesus to do miracles, to do signs and wonders. John chapter 14 verse number 12. John 14 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to my father. Now watch the next verse, verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And we said this is not prayer. This is demanding the name of Jesus to do the works of Jesus. Demanding the name of Jesus to do the works of Jesus. That's why Jesus said, whatever you demand in my name, I will do it. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Then in John chapter 16, verse 23 and 24. John chapter 16, 23 and 24. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. This is the name of Jesus in prayer. The name of Jesus in prayer ask the father in my name he will give it to you in fact look at the next verse he thought oh, have you asked nothing in my name ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full ask and you shall receive that's prayer that your joy may be full demanding the name of jesus he says that the father may be glorified in the son now so making demand on the power or making a demand on a situation you know he says he says like when jesus says you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover that is demanding in the name of jesus now that john chapter 14 verse 12 you know one of the dilemma of the modern church is the inability to differentiate between the name of Jesus in the four Gospels and Jesus in the epistles. They are not the same even though it's the same person. And that's where the dilemma is. Even with a lot of people that have problem with the things we teach, with our Bible, you know, our Bible teaching, the, the, the problem is they do not know that there's a difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And they also do not know that there's a difference between the name of Jesus in the four Gospels and the name of Jesus in the epistles. They are not the same. I have heard people say things like, People are following Brother Paul too much. You know, in fact, I was in a meeting somewhere where I, I, you know, I presented the message of Christ. And when I finished, one of the fathers of the Pentecostal church he stood up and said, My problem is whenever you quote Brother Paul too much, why are you quoting Brother Paul too much? And I said, What is Brother Paul? What is Brother Paul? Is there a Brother Paul? Is the message not the message of Jesus? Is there a brother Paul? What, what's that? He said, you quote brother Paul too much. You know, why should you read Paul? Let's follow the words of Jesus. Well, that's an ignorant statement with all due respect to him. That's a total ignorant statement. And I'm saying that with due respect because he may be watching this service. That's totally an ignorant statement. Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do. And greater works. That means there's a greater glory because Jesus went to the Father. You will do greater because I go to the Father. Jesus going to the Father brought greater glory. In the four Gospels, Jesus had not yet gone to the Father. That means the greater glory is in the epistles. The greater glory is in the New Testament. That's where the greater glory is. He said, because I go to my father, and then he speaks of greater works. Jesus performed miracles in the four gospels. He performed miracles of healing. 
for example in matthew chapter 8 verse 16 and 17 matthew chapter 8 verse 16 and 17 when the even was calm they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick next verse that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness in Matthew chapter 9 verse 34 Jesus also was healing Matthew 9 34 but the Pharisees said he casted out devils through the prince of the devils okay so Jesus was casting out devils and Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching because that's the primary work of, of ministry. Teaching. Everywhere he went, he was teaching. Because the church is a teaching house. He went teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. In Luke chapter 5 verse 17, Luke chapter 5 verse number 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. In Mark chapter 5 verse 25 to 33, you can read that one at home. The woman with the issue of blood, when she had heard about Jesus said, If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be made whole. In Matthew chapter 8, Jesus, you know, spoke to the centurion who said, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be made whole. And Jesus healed that gentleman. In Matthew chapter 14, in John chapter 6, it talks about the miracle of two loaves and, and you know, two loaves of bread and fish where Jesus multiplied. All these were miracles and healings in the ministry of Jesus. In Mark chapter 4, he walked on the water and Peter also walked on the water. In John chapter 2 verse 11, he turned water to wine. And the Bible tells us this beginning of miracles did Jesus Christ of, of, Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth and he showed forth his glory. So Jesus did miracles in the four gospels. Very, very serious miracles. In fact, in Acts chapter 2 verse 22, look at what Peter said about Jesus' ministry. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, by miracles and wonders and signs. Why was he able to do signs and wonders and miracles? Was it because he was God? No. No. He did not function as God in the four Gospels. He did not function as God in the four Gospels. He was God that became a man. So in the four Gospels, he functioned as man. He functioned as man. Remember, he grew in wisdom. God does not grow. He grew in stature. God never grows. He grew in favor. God does not grow. But Jesus grew because he was functioning as a complete man. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Look at the prophecy concerning deity becoming man. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And shall call his name Emmanuel. That is God will become us. God will become a man. That's the meaning of Emmanuel. God with us. God has become a man. Look at Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 For unto us a child is born Unto us a son is given And the government shall be upon his shoulder And his name shall be called Wonderful His name singular shall be called Wonderful 
counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. This is the prophecy of deity becoming a man. In Micah chapter 5 verse 2, Micah chapter 5 verse number 2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he comfort unto me that is to be a ruler in Israel. Watch this. Whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So God that has been from of old, from everlasting, will come through Bethlehem of Judah. That was a prophecy of deity becoming a man. So he was God who became a man. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. Brother Paul says to Timothy, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, or the Godhead, God was manifest in the flesh. God became a man. In John chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the word, verse 2, And the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 14, And the word was made flesh. God became a man. The word was made flesh. God became a man and dwelt among us. So he was God that became a man. But in the four gospels until date, he functions as a man. In the four gospels until today, Jesus is functioning as a man. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 and 6. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 and 6. For there is one God, there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. The man, so he is a man today. Next verse. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. The man Christ Jesus. That's why he was given a name. He became the son of God. He was not the son of God in heaven. He was not the son of God in heaven. He was, he became son of, son of God in the incarnation. In the incarnation. Please, these are facts you, can, you cannot afford not to understand. These are facts you must know them like you know the number of your fingers these are facts that anytime somebody just tickles you they flow out of you you know without obstruction these are things if you don't know these things your christianity is still in the shadows these are things you must know them like you know them you must know them not just cram them you must know them they must be part of your system. Jesus was given a name. Remember, in the four Gospels, he had parents. God doesn't have parents, but Jesus had parents. In the four Gospels, he was hungry. God does not get hungry, but Jesus was hungry. Gospels, he was thirsty. God is never thirsty, but Jesus was thirsty. In the four Gospels, he slept. He slept so much till they had to beat him up to wake up because they were perishing. God does not sleep nor slumber. In the four gospels, he was tempted. James 1.13 tells us God cannot be tempted. In the four gospels, Jesus was a complete man. So why was he able to do the miracles he did? Very simple. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. So he did miracles because he was anointed. Now, if he functioned as God, 
Will he need the spirit of the Lord God to be upon him? He wouldn't need the spirit of the Lord God. He, he was anointed to preach. You don't anoint God. But Jesus was anointed to preach. Quoting from Isaiah 61 in prophecy from verse 1 to 3. How does he refer to him? Look at the way Jesus concluded that reading in Luke chapter 4, verse number 21. Luke 4, 21. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture of Isaiah 61, which I have just quoted in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Next verse. And all bore him witness. And wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? Is not this Joseph's son? Look at the next verse. And he said unto them, you will surely say unto me this proverb, physician heal thyself. Whatsoever we have had done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. So he was a man. Complete man. Now, when did this anointing happen? In Luke chapter 3, when John baptized him with water, John recorded that the Holy Spirit came on Jesus and remained on him. You will see that in Matthew chapter 3. You will see that in John chapter 1. The Holy Spirit came on Jesus in the presence of John. It was John's baptism that Jesus was anointed. He couldn't begin before the, the baptism of John. For the 30 years he lived on earth, he did no miracle at all. Until the baptism of John. The ministry of Jesus started from the baptism of John. He couldn't begin before because he was not anointed. He couldn't begin ministry till he was anointed. Now Peter lets us know how this functions. In Acts chapter 1 verse 21, a lot of scriptures but good for your saintly dignity. Acts chapter 1 verse 21. Wherefore of this man, when they were trying to replace Judas and they were casting lot to select the next person that will fit into being one of the 12 apostles. After Judas Carrot, after Judas the Carrot, you know, had gone. They were now trying to replace him with somebody. And this was the condition. Wherefore of these men which have accompanied with us all the time. Critical. All the time. That's why when you belong to a church like this, make sure you are part of what is going on all the time. That's the only way we know you are with us. All this off and on Christianity, you are a joke. You are a classical joke. Irrespective of your billions of excuses you are just a joke because when the chips are down and and god himself want to determine those that fit into being used by him these are the qualifications you look for company with us all the time that the lord jesus went in and out amongst us you must be found in house church you must be found in all our crusades, outreaches. You must be involved in evangelism. You must be involved in giving. You must be found in prayer crews. You must be involved in everything. You can't just be a Sunday Christian. Not in this kind of church. What are you understanding coming only on Sundays? When within the week we have already taught for how many hours? Each evening I taught for nothing less than one hour, 30 minutes. Then you arrive on Sunday to hear what? Who goes to school and attend lectures once a month? Nobody does that. 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 Amen. He said of that guy, he said, he said, I swear they will not enter the promised land except Joshua and Caleb because they have followed me fully. They have followed me fully. There is a 
doggedness in commitment to the ministry of the word and prayer that must be found in you. As we are sitting here, God is setting people up to serve his purpose. God is setting people up to serve his purpose. And God is not joking. Because God has a plan. God has a purpose to carry out on the earth. God has a reason why the earth has not packed up. God has a mission to carry out on the earth among his people. That same mission that made Jesus die on the cross, that same mission is still on. That's the only reason why this earth has not packed up in spite of all the evils in the earth. God is merciful and is working through his mercy to carry out his mission on the earth. So God is setting people up. God is positioning people. God is shifting people. God is using circumstances to relocate people, to position people, to set people up because that purpose must be served. But the people God will set up are people that are following fully. God cannot use a half-baked man to rescue a half-baked man. God cannot use an idiotis to set a captive free. When he called the twelve, the first thing the Bible says, is he called the twelve to be with him. To be with him. Then after, he will send them. To be with him. And I'm dealing with our attitude towards commitment and consistency to the ministry of the world. Consistency to the study of God's word. That attitude is of the essence. The meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he teach in the way that he shall choose. Look at that Acts one twenty one again. Acts one twenty one. Wherefore of these men which have companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Next verse. Beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us. Must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection? That is, you cannot be a witness of his resurrection except you were there with them from the baptism of John consistently. You were there when Jesus came in, when Jesus went out. You were in with them until the day Jesus was taken away. Look at the window of time where a man must have been committed to be a witness of the resurrection. That time was important. They didn't say he must have passed exam. They didn't say the man must be able to, the man must be able to sit and write a thesis on the resurrection. They say all we want is that the man must have been there from the baptism of John and has been with us throughout till the day Jesus was taken to heaven. Even if he didn't learn anything, he saw things. Even if he doesn't know Greek and Hebrew, by virtue of being around, there are things he has seen. Are we teaching here? So that's the qualification for one that will replace Judas. For one that will be a witness of the resurrection. For one that will be an apostle of the Lamb. When they were going to pick a replacement, beginning from the baptism of John. So whoever was an apostle of Jesus must have started from the baptism of John because that is where the public ministry of Jesus started from. It was at the baptism of John that Jesus' ministry started. In fact, Peter spoke about it in Acts chapter 10 verse 34. Pay attention. Acts of the apostles chapter 10 verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive. That God is no respecter of persons. Next verse. But in every nation, he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word I say you know, which was published throughout all Judea. It was published. It was published. I'm sure that is from where the woman with the issue of blood heard about Jesus. When she had heard, she had heard because it was published that Jesus has been anointed by the Holy Spirit from the baptism of John and began from Galilee after the baptism 
which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Now, who was the first person who preached that Jesus was anointed? Huh? John the Baptist. Because John was a prophet of the Old Testament. And all the prophets of the Old Testament were to point to Christ. So John, point, John pointed him out and singled him out. So beginning from that point, because John saw it, he saw Jesus anointed of the Spirit and it happened in his presence. So from that baptism of John, Jesus began his ministry. So why was Jesus able to do miracles? He was anointed at the baptism of John. So Jesus began miracles at the baptism of John. There were those who even after Jesus has died and risen from the dead, who have not yet gotten the revelation of his resurrection. They were stuck up in Jesus the anointed. Stuck up there. And didn't progress to his resurrection. Jesus the exalted one. Today we still have such Christians who still function with Jesus of the four Gospels. They lack understanding. Now there were two cases like that in the Bible. One was a Christian, the others were not. In Acts chapter 18, now pay attention. That means in the three and a half years, the news that spread around about Jesus was how God anointed Jesus at the baptism of John. That's how, you know, everyone who knew about Jesus knew about him. Je John was an accepted prophet. Throughout Israel, he was accepted and honored and respected. So his testimony of Jesus was received. Now, please pay attention because I'm getting something here. There were now people, after many years, like 50 years, still had this knowledge about Jesus. Even today in the body of Christ... There are people who don't still speak in tongues. And they give you reasons for it. They give you reasons. How many years has Holy Ghost been here? For over 2,000 years now. And yet there are still people who don't speak in tongues. And they have fantastic reasons why they don't speak in tongues. <laughs> there are Christians born again who don't believe that healing still exists. They are born again, but they believe that the day of healing is over. But they are born again, who? confirmed. They are born again. Heaven bound. But they don't believe in healing. Just there are people born again who don't believe in the baptism of the spirit. They don't believe in utterance. They don't believe in tongues. It's not how good you can teach the Bible. That is the matter. It is what do you teach. And that's where the problem is. What are people being taught? Some guys can expound holiness for you. If they preach holiness to you now, you can't even stand up from your seat. <laughs> I have listened to some crazy teachings on holiness. And when I look at them and examine those teachings in the light of scripture, it is total nonsense. Yet they are quoting the Bible. They are quoting the Bible. Some people handle things in scripture that have since been explained. Today you still have people going for water baptism and they argue that it is still part of the Christian practice. Says who? You are swimming in public. And you're... People still take bread and wine in churches and they call it Holy Communion. Holy Communion. And they can't find any verse where they have that word, Holy Communion, written in the entire Bible. And yet they are practicing it. They can't point to anywhere there is Holy Communion in the entire Bible. And yet they are practicing. <laughs> uh, yeah. The only thing close to that thing they call Holy Communion is the Passover which was a feast of the Jews. So if you're a Jew, you can be eating it. 
Oh Lord. Mama says I should stop this laughing. <laughs> now it is this laughter that used to annoy some people. <laughs> Any Christian that does not laugh is not born again. <laughs> you know these bloggers that edit videos. <laughs> if they want to annoy you, they will show a preacher's foolishness. Then they will put my laughter after it. <laughs> Preacher has abused scripture, then they will put my laughter out. <laughs> These people, eh? I will start making them pay fees. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. <clears throat> I didn't laugh much today, right? <laughs> you know, there were people like that in scripture who were stuck in outdated practices. For example, even the apostles for many years. They didn't preach to non-Jews. They were only preaching to Jewish people. Simply because they were stuck in that practice. Yet they had miracles. They had signs and wonders. Even though their teaching was wrong. So signs, wonders and miracles are not a proof that what the man is teaching is correct. Don't be carried away by signs, wonders and miracles. Those are gifts of God's grace. And they are given to anybody. Even an atheist will have miracle signs and wonders. Because God is gracious to mankind. Look at an example of, of somebody who you know, was one of those in the, in the New Testament church. Who was a preacher of the gospel. But yet was stuck in, you know, in, in outdated, outdated teaching of God's word. I'm going to show you an example. Because it took the revelation of Paul. The Pauline revelation. To unlock the New Testament. It took the teachings of brother Paul. The Pauline revelation. To unlock the New Testament. So let's begin with a guy. Called by the name of. Acts 18.24. You will see his name there. Acts chapter 18 verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos. Born at Alexandria. And an eloquent man. He was eloquent. Eloquent. And mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. He was eloquent. He could talk. Mighty in scriptures. He could quote scriptures anyhow. Look at verse 25 of Acts 18. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. But look at the lacuna here. Knowing only the baptism of John. Knowing only the baptism of John. What does Luke mean by knowing only the baptism of John? Apollos was a good teacher. He had Bible study. Apollos was on TV and radio. But all Apollos taught was how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. All Apollos taught was Jesus, the anointed one. Was not, not this, that was the same message in the four gospels. That's exactly what they were teaching in the four gospels. But Apollos was operating like this in the New Testament. All he knew was still the message of the four gospels. But he was eloquent. He was mighty in scriptures. But all he was quoting was still the baptism of John. Yet Jesus had already told them some 50 years ago, greater works than these shall you do because I go to my father. Because I'm going to die, be buried and resurrect, you will operate in the greater works. But this guy was knowledgeable about what happened from the cross to the throne. Apollos did not know about what happened from the cross to the throne. 
all Apollos knew was that Jesus was anointed of the Holy Spirit. He knew Jesus died. He knew he was raised from the dead. But what happened after, Apollos did not know. But he was so mighty in scripture. He could quote and quote and quote and quote. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Aquila and Priscilla were members of Brother Paul's church. The church you attend is very important. The church you attend is very important. You can't attend a sound Bible teaching church. And then one day you find yourself in a church where scriptures are not well taught and be comfortable there. The moment they start talking, you will, start, you will be like a fault finder. But you're not a fault finder. It's just that their faults will be so obvious. Am I communicating here? They just go like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So instead of getting blessed now, you're marking script. Mm? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, half, correct? Half wrong. Uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. You're busy marking script. It's not your fault. It's just that you came with greater light. And they're using candle light. To be shining around you when you are just there with floodlight. So all their weaknesses and mistakes are obvious before your eyes. That's why it's good to belong to a good church. Aquila and Priscilla were, were students of brother Paul. They were members of Paul's church. Imagine a member of Paul's church. Arriving in the church of, of, of Apollos. And Apollos is teaching. They will not be marking his script. Yes, wrong, 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 wrong. Oh my goodness, how do we help this man? And look at the way he's sweating and gyrating. See how he's caught. Oh, I, no, no, no now. No, no, no now. 50-year-old man. <laughs> is it 50 year old man or 80 year old man they used to say <laughs> eh? 70 year old man <laughs> so all of you are victims of social media <laughs> 70 year old man <laughs> what's wrong with me today now <laughs> So Aquila and Priscilla were sitting down. Apollos was busy gyrating. When they heard him preach, they sought an audience with him. They said, please, can we see pastor? And they were saying, did you book for counseling? <laughs> did you book for counseling? What's the matter? Is he healing or are you believing God for miracle or you need divine direction? What's the matter? <laughs> they say, you need healing, you need miracle, you need divine direction. That's why we want to serve it to you. <laughs> Because he was, he was feeling too important. He was feeling, you know, big man of God in town. He was feeling accomplished, you know. And then the Bible tells us, he gave them audience. And they took him unto them and expounded to him the way of God more perfectly. Look at it in that Acts chapter 18, verse 26. Acts 18, 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Next verse. Next verse. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote ex exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. Look at the next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews. Now he was not quoting. He was no more eloquent. He was now explaining scriptures with scriptures. He mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly, showing by the scriptures, he's now doing Bible teaching. He's doing exegesis that Jesus was Christ. He humbled himself and his ministry was helped. He humbled himself and his ministry was assisted. When they heard him preach, they assisted him. And there are preachers today who need Priscilla and Aquila a lot all over the place. Someone said to me, the Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. So I said to him, what does it mean? He said, without holiness, you cannot make heaven. That's not true. That Hebrews 12, 4, he was not, I mean, 12, 14, he was not referring to the Christian. He was saying, 
no unbeliever will see the Lord in us. That's why I started by saying, follow peace with all men and holiness. For without which no man shall see the Lord. That is, if you don't follow peace with people, they will not see God in your life. That's all he was saying. He was not saying without, we have already seen Jesus. <laughs> he was not referring to the Christian. He was referring to conduct our lifestyle amongst men. The writer of Hebrews, before that chapter 12, already said in chapter 2 verse 11, Hebrews 2, 11, look at what he already said. But for both he that are sanctified and they that are sanctified are all of what? He, he said you're already sanctified. In Hebrews 3, 1, holy brethren, he already calls you holy, partakers of the heavenly calling. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12, he already said, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. He already calls us holy. So he wasn't talking to us. He is saying, without us living in peace with all men, they won't see the Lord in us. He's not talking about heaven here. Because the only way to get to heaven is not holiness. The only way to get to heaven is to believe in Jesus. Faith in Christ equals heaven. Faith in Christ equals heaven. It's not holiness. It is Christ coming to you that makes you holy. Christ in you is holiness. And Christ will come into you when you believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. You are holy because you believe in Jesus. The man who is born again is holy. Holy doesn't mean sinless. Holy means set apart. Holy means you have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are brought from the world into Christ. That separation is what is called holiness. I'm teaching good here. So all Apollos had was still the message Jesus preached in the four gospels. So a man can have signs and wonders with limited knowledge. A man can have signs and wonders with limited knowledge. Look at the next chapter. Paul goes somewhere and there's another group. The Bible says... That Apollos was fervent in spirit, which means he was born again, but limited in knowledge. Look at Acts chapter 19 verse 1. Pay attention. Acts chapter 19 verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Certain disciples. That means they are not born again. Certain disciples. <laughs> that means they are not born again. Next verse. You will find out now. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. We never even hear, is there, what? what is Holy Ghost? Is he an animal or a man? Or Holy We've never had such a name. And he said unto them, unto what then were you baptized? Because salvation is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism, four gospel. In Acts 19, they are still stuck in the four gospels. John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which shall come after him. That is on Jesus, on Christ Jesus. Next verse. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because the other one was swimming exercise. If you are baptized in water and you are not born again, you are in hell already. But if you are born again and you believe in Jesus and you are not baptized with water, you are in heaven already. Teaching good. Give me that scripture again. Put it up. <laughs> when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Next verse. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So you see, they functioned under John's baptism, which was already outdated. And they were not saved. But they were committed in church attendance. 
you must know the difference between the four gospels and the epistles. The Jesus of the four gospels is different from the Jesus of the epistles, but he is the same person, but not the same glory and not the same authority. In the four gospels, what he had was John's baptism. What he had was the anointing of the spirit. So Jesus says in John 14, 12, Greater works than these shall you do because I go unto my father. Now which works did he do? He was able to do the works because of the anointing of the spirit. And then there were people like that. Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 10, the 12 apostles. He gave them authority and power to use his name. So they will go everywhere and say, In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, anointed of the spirit, unclean spirit, come out. And the demons will go. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the anointed of the spirit, be healed. And the person will be healed. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, anointed of the spirit, receive your sight. Blind eyes will open. They were functioning in the name of Jesus of the four gospels. But what does he mean? Because I go to my father greater works than this. What's the meaning of that? It means the Jesus of the four gospels is the incarnate one. The Jesus of the four gospels is the anointed of the spirit to minister. But the Jesus of the epistles who rose from the dead is different. Now the same person, but one glory is greater than the other. Let's see how the scriptures present him after he rose from the dead and went to heaven. Acts chapter 2 verse 32. Acts of the apostles chapter 2 verse 32. This Jesus hath God raised up. Whereof we are all witnesses, or we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he had shed for this, which you now see and hear. You know, a large majority of Christians are Bible illiterates. A vast majority. And ministers appear unconcerned as long as they keep coming and giving offerings and sowing seeds to tap and paying tithes. Ministers don't care. A lot of ministers. All they want is just bring that tithe, drop the seed, drop the offering. If you like, let Satan be beating you every day. They don't care. They don't care. He said, one of the Pentecostal fathers called me and was, he said, Dr. Damina, you have caused commotion all over the country. Everywhere I enter is Damina, 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 Damina. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, you are not serious. It's all over the place. He said, one preacher come, he said, why does Damina not want us to eat? <laughs> me? How did I collect the food? What did I do? Well, on phone for a while. He said, but you know, the problem is many of them don't pay attention. I'm not sure they listen to you complete. Because if they really calm down, he said, because I had to calm down. I had to calm down because I have known you for over 30 years. And I know you're not that kind of person. So I knew that something must be wrong with my hearing. So I calmed down and I began to listen. And I could see everything you're saying. But they are not coming down. They are not coming down. Abedilimi. me. It's Greek. It's pigeon Greek. <laughs> It's not even classical Greek. It's pigeon Greek. <laughs> Coin Greek. <laughs> Abbe. <laughs> uh, any 
pastor who is not concerned about your knowledge of the word of God does not love you. Any pastor who is not concerned about your knowledge of the word of God does not love you. Now someone say, why do we emphasize so much of study in power city? Let me tell you why. You see, I'm not a superstar. I'm only your trainer. As your pastor, I'm your trainer. I'm your coach. I want you to be able to teach what I teach. Walk in the world. Flow in the things of the spirit like I do. So I will spend time to train you, train you, train you. Just like in medical school. The trainer will train you to be a medical doctor. In the medical school, the trainer is not showing you that he knows medical science. He's not trying to impress you. The trainer in medical school wants to transfer knowledge to you and his joy is to see you practice medicine like him with the same proficiency. So in this church, I'm not a superstar. I'm not trying to wow you with knowledge and drop cliches here and there. Your depth will determine your height. Your height will determine your width. Your width will determine your weight. No. I'm not here to wow you. I'm not a superstar. I'm a trainer. I'm a coach. My job is to break it down and make you understand it and see you teach it the way I teach it, if possible, better than I teach it. Better than I teach it. Every Sunday night when I sit down with the coordinators, our global coordinators, all the coordinators of our campuses, I allow them to teach me back what I taught. And when I hear them doing exegesis, taking my messages and breaking, I get so blessed. And in my mind, I just go like, oh my goodness. This world doesn't know what is about to hit them. Oh my goodness. See them all over the nations. Men and women everywhere. Look at exegesis. See the way they are breaking scriptures. Oh my goodness. Oh my, every Sunday night, that's all I do. I sit down and hear all my sons and daughters across the globe teach me back what I have taught. Very powerful sessions. Because that is my joy. That is my pride as a pastor to see you teach the word the way I teach it and flow in the things of the spirit and do the will of God on earth. That's all I'm about. I don't care about whether anybody knows me or somebody said Dr. Damina is chasing cloud. Me chasing cloud. Do you know when I had cloud? I'm not sure you were born again at the time I was having cloud. Chasing cloud. A chaser of cloud will not make a statement and shake the body of Christ all over the world. It's because I already have the cloud. So when I speak, it goes all over the nations. I'm not looking for cloud. I'm not looking for popularity. I'm not looking for stardom. I want to raise people for Christ. I want to raise sound teachers and preachers of the gospel. My job is to train and equip and that's why we spend time, spend hours upon hours, teaching and teaching and teaching. We barely don't even have enough time to sing. Or any other thing. I'm a trainer. I'm a coach. That's the job of a pastor. That's why I put you under discipline. You must read the Bible. You must study the Bible. Because that's the only book we have from God. The Bible is the only book we have from God. Some pastors are not concerned as long as you are dependent on their words. Not the word of God, their own words. So this is a church that loves you. This is a church that wants you to know the word of God and live by it. This is a church that wants you to know the word of God and live by it. Miracles are not a proof of salvation. We believe in miracles in this church and we see miracles. I mean, we have testimonies all the time. It's just that we don't make a big deal about them. What we're about here is Jesus himself. But, you know, as a child of God, miracles are not a proof of growth. Bearing fruit is a proof of growth. Bearing fruit is a proof of salvation. If you are truly born again, the fruit will show. How do you bear fruit? You abide in the word. You abide in the word. That's how you bear fruit. You abide in the word. 
Church is not an entertainment center. In church, we are serious minded. We learn about life. We learn about the life of God. I have told myself, I am committed to make the word of God published all over the world. I am committed to raise an army of people all over the world that will make it difficult for charlatans to have a free flow any longer. I'm committed to raise a people that will shine the light of Christ where darkness will be very difficult to find hiding anywhere. That's my commitment. And men are rising. Men are rising in this house. Men are rising in our campuses. Men are rising online. Men are rising all over the nations. And together, we herald the word of God like never before. And we shine this glorious light. I didn't hear that amen in the building. One day, you, you here sitting, you will appreciate why we spend quality time to study. One day, one day, if you have not yet discovered, one day is come. You will stand on your own, I won't be there. I'll be shouting, God bless Abel Damina. Abel Damina, be blessed. Be blessed. One day. You will carry millions of dollars. Where is Damina's account? One day, one day, one day, one day, you'll be glad you found a pastor who didn't lie to you, who didn't deceive you, who didn't use you for his pocket. One day, you'll be glad you found a pastor who was dogged, who was determined to make sure that you know scripture and you know Christ. One day, one day, one day. You will stay on your own. I won't be there. You'll be looking for me. You'll be looking for me. With thanksgiving. One day. That day is coming. Oh yeah. That day is coming. That day is coming. Glory to God. Yeah. That day is coming. You will appreciate what we spend all the time studying. All the time. Every time you call is teaching, teaching, teaching. We stretch you, stretch you. You will sit well. You will sit one guy. Then you will do one guy. Then you will do one guy. So that I can see that your bum bum is moving around. I know they look. <laughs> My eyes are on the camera. <laughs> now you shift, shift. After you shift tire, you settle down. Just like after hot water boil, it will calm down. You settle down. You continue writing again. One day you will appreciate all of this discipline. That day is coming. Amen. I said amen. amen. So where do we find Jesus in the four gospels? On the streets, anointed by the Holy Ghost after the baptism of John. So after the four gospels, we find Jesus now in the epistles. Look at the way Stephen spoke about Jesus, the risen Lord. Acts 7.55. Acts chapter 7 verse 55. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Romans 8 34 Romans chapter 8 verse 34 who is he that condemned it? it is Christ that died yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us so Jesus is at the right hand of God right now First Corinthians 15 24. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. Then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Next verse. For he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. Next verse. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Next verse. For he had put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him. It is manifest that he is accepted. Which did put all things under him. 28. 
And when all things shall be subdued under him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that God may be all in all. All of them are quoting from Psalm 110 verse 1. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Can I have a powerful amen? amen. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 19. Pay attention. Ephesians 1 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and had put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Look at chapter 2 of that same Ephesians, verse 6. Chapter 2, verse 6. Ephesians 2, 6. And has raised us up together. So it's not only Jesus that was raised up. All of us have been exalted together in Christ raised us up together made us sit together in heavenly places in christ jesus so jesus is seated at the right hand of the father philippians chapter 2 verse 9 to 10 god has exalted him and given him a name that is above every name Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 If you then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ seated at the right hand of God Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens Jesus the son of God let us hold fast our profession for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need Hebrews Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12 to 14. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12 to 14. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. 1 Peter 3 22. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 22. Who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him first john chapter 2 verse 1 first john chapter 2 verse 1 my little children these things write out unto you that you sin not and if any man sin we have an advocate with the father the advocacy of jesus so now he is our advocate with the father at the right hand of the father. This is the identity of Jesus after he rose from the dead. He is exalted. I have explained to you what it means to be at the right hand. It means I give you all authority to act on my behalf. All. Who is to sit at the right hand of God? Yesterday I told you that it was man that was supposed to sit at the right hand of God in Genesis 1.26 let us make man let them have dominion did man ever sit there? no because man fell Hebrews chapter 2 verse 5 explains it put it up Hebrews chapter 2 verse 5 but unto the angels has he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak but one in a certain place testified saying what is man? That thou art mindful of him, or the son of man, that thou visitest him. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and this set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus. So since man fell, Jesus took the place of man. 
and sat at the right hand of God for man. And today in Christ, we are seated at that same right hand of God. I didn't hear a good amen. In John chapter 5, what did the father give to Jesus? John 5, 19 to 20. Pay attention. John 5, 19 to 20. Then answered Jesus and said unto him, unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do. For what thing soever he doeth, this also doeth the son likewise. For the father loveth the son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater work than this, that you may marvel. So what does the father give to the son? Number one, the father gives to the son a greater revelation. A greater revelation. Look at that John 5.21. John 5.21. For as the father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the son quickened whom he will. So number one, greater revelation. Number two, he gives the son power to raise up people from all judgment. He has given revelation to the son. He has given resurrection to the son. He has given all judgment to the son. Look at John 5, 23 to 25. John 5, 23. That all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father which has sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. Say with me very loud, everybody. I am alive today. Because Jesus is at the right hand of God. Now say very loud, the Father has committed all things to Jesus. I didn't hear a powerful amen. John 5, 26. John 5, 26. For as the Father had life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. 27. And had given him authority to execute judgment also. Because he is the son of man. So he has given to the son revelation. He has given to the son authority. He has given to the son judgment. And all of this represents the right hand of God. All of this represents the right hand of God. So Jesus of the four gospels never raised anyone from spiritual death. How many of you know that? Jesus of the four gospels never raised anybody from spiritual death and never gave anybody eternal life. The Jesus of the four gospels never judged anyone. The Jesus of the four gospels did not reveal anything about God to anybody. You know, he told the disciples in John chapter 16 verse 12, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. So when did the spirit of truth come? When Jesus went to the right hand of God. The spirit of truth came when Jesus went to the right hand of God. So you cannot know anything about God in the four gospels. Jesus' teaching ministry was limited in the four Gospels. So Jesus of the epistles is at the right hand of the Father. That's why in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, All authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. When was it given him? When he rose from the dead. It was when he rose from the dead that he sat at the right hand. In the fourth gospel, he says, don't go to the Gentiles. Go only to the Jews. But when he rose from the dead, he said, go into all the world. All the world. 
go and make disciples. In the house of Cornelius, while Peter was yet speaking, the Holy Ghost fell on those who heard. And they went and reported Peter that he took the Holy Ghost and went and gave to Gentiles. They summoned him back to the Jerusalem church. He told them the vision and he told them the experience. And today many Gentiles want to be Jews. This is my body broken for you. Are you a Jew? Observing Sabbath days. Taking people to river in the name of baptism. Are you a Jew? Some even build swimming pools in churches. <laughs> Digital swimming pools. They've not seen that Jesus has now been glorified. He is no more in the four gospel. He has been glorified. All symbols are over. All practices are over. What we have now is the faith in revelation knowledge. Philippians 2, 9, Wherefore God has whole also highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. He has given him a name that is above every name. At the name of Jesus. Not a dimension of that name. No. At the name of Jesus. Not at the mention. The reason why you are using mention is because you don't know the name. The name is not J-E-S-U-S. The name is all of his sacrificial work. So that's why you don't, it, you don't have to say in Jesus' name before demons obey you. You just walk in and say out. And they go. Because you are in the name. You yourself, you are in the name. Salvation is in the name. You are saved in the name. So you are in the name. So when you walk, you walk in the name. When you speak, you speak in the name. Is there something wrong with saying in Jesus' name? Nothing. But in case there was no time to put the words together in Jesus' name, just hey, should take care of the matter. Teaching good here. Tell your neighbor, say, I am in that name. When I speak, I speak in the authority of that name. The name is not the label. The name is the work of Christ. If the authority is in J-E-S-U-S, -S, it means anybody bearing J-E-S-U-S -S has authority. And J-E-S-U-S -S is Joshua. So if your name is Joshua here, you're actually bearing Jesus. Because Joshua is Jesus. Jesus is Joshua. But the power is not in the label. The power is in the work of Christ. So if you know what Jesus has done, and you are saved by what Jesus has done, you are in the name. So when you move, you move in the name. When you speak, you speak in that name. When you preach, you are preaching in the name. When you teach, you are teaching in the name. And when demons try to make noise, and you say, shh, out. You get size. Turn to your neighbor. Say the greater glory is on my inside. Say I am functioning in the greater glory. This is not Jesus of the four gospels. This is the resurrected Christ. Exalted. Seated. At the right hand of God. Right now. And I have news for you neighbor. I am seated with him. Is there anybody else sit there together with Christ? Stand on your feet. Give him some shout. Glory. 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 I bow.
bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. Father, I thank you that you hear me. Why? Because you are in the name. When you lay hands on the sick, they recover. What the name will do is exactly what Jesus will do. So if Jesus will not say be healed and the sickness disobey, when you say be healed in Jesus' name, the sickness has no audacity to disobey. So don't expect the sickness to disobey. Expect the sickness to obey. Say, I heal the sick. Shout it very loud. Say it confidently. Say, I cast out devils. Say, signs follow me. I am in that name. I am seated right now. At the right hand of the Father. I'm seated with Christ. And I function in his authority. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Are you blessed this morning or what? Glory to God. Lift your right hands. Father, thank you for the privilege to learn to grow, to be equipped. Revelation knowledge keeps growing big in our hearts until nothing else matters. In the name of Jesus. Sick bodies are healed right now. Where you need a miracle, receive that miracle now. Receive that miracle now. Those documentations that you've been waiting for, they are released right now. They are released right now. Receive it right now. Jobs are released right now. Favor is working for you. Favor is working for you. Closed doors are open for you. Barriers collapse because of you. In the name of Jesus, delays are taken away. Le granda jokola bebre la ko mara lega sobe rekita nanga in your body where you need a creative miracle receive a creative miracle your ears be restored your hearing be corrected your sight is corrected every condition in your body is corrected i command skin disease be healed be healed liver disease be healed Paralysis flushed out. Flushed out. In the name of Jesus. I command your bones, your, your joints, your marrow. I command your muscles, your tissues to be revived by the power of God. In the name of Jesus. God's healing power flows through your body right now. Body be healed right now. Satan get your hands off. I break the oppression of the enemy. Depression, go. I break the yoke of depression. Be broken in the name of Jesus. I release the joy of salvation. The joy of salvation. The joy of salvation. Receive it in the name of Jesus. This week I release you to experience God's favor like never before. Testimonies. 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 We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. If you believe it is done, give the Lord the greatest celebration in this. Earth. Give him some shout, give him some praise. Mm -hmm. Glory! Amen. Say with me, I am on a mission. I am God's instrument. Say it again, I am God's instrument for God's mission on the earth. Say it again, I am God's instrument for God's mission on the earth. I am here to serve God's purpose to my generation. I am on a divine assignment. I have supernatural supplies to do exploits on behalf of Jesus. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Glory to God. Grab your honor offerings. Let's worship Jesus this morning. We give in faith. We give with joy. And in this house, we give intelligently. We give with an understanding that our givings are a vehicle through which God carries out his purpose on the earth. So online, you want to give the banking details are on the screen for you to give. Radio audience, the bank accounts are FCMB. 
2982-68-2028. Zenith Bank, 10, 12, 36, 59, 12. 10, 12, 36, 59, 12. Online, the banking details are there. We give with an understanding that our giving makes it possible for the gospel to reach the ends of the earth. Father, thank you for the privilege of giving today. Our offerings are a sweet smell before you. And thank you for the opportunity to do this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Online, we're going to sign you off in a few minutes. But you don't want to miss what I'm going to teach in the next service. You don't want to miss it at all. So get ready, 11 a.m. GMT plus one will bring more word. And I want to quickly mention that from tomorrow, we start the Global Discipleship Academy. If you want to be a part of it, quickly shoot a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Or you know people who have, who have too many questions to ask about what we teach. Encourage them, instead of standing by the line and shouting heresy, heresy, they should come to the Global Discipleship Academy where I will teach you on Zoom and at the end, you ask questions and I will answer all your questions and ensure you come to a place of understanding. Tell more people about it. It starts tomorrow. If you shoot a mail now, we will send you all the details on how to connect and how to be a part of the Global Discipleship Academy. It starts tomorrow, all right? Expecting to get a mail from you. We love you guys. And we will see you in the next service at 11 a.m. GMT plus one. Hit the music. Let's do it as we worship Jesus, the risen Lord. Glory to God. Jesus the same yesterday. We trust that you have been blessed by this message. To order the complete series of this message and all the messages by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.